This video is unfortunately not sponsored by M&M's. Whoa, a package from Mike. I wonder what it could be. Oh. Oh. M&M Kart Racing is pure gaming minimalism wrapped in a sweet, crunchy product placement shell. If racing in the poor man's Mario Kart is a giant anthropomorphic M&M monster is your idea of a good time, then you're in for the ride of your life. Once you've chosen your character and vehicle, you'll be whisked off into a race. I went with the orange guy because, uh, I mean, just look at him. The guy seriously needs a win. Okay, now that that's all set, it's time to get to the race. Right away you'll notice this is not the prettiest game. The backgrounds are pretty one-dimensional, and the levels seem to just kind of pop into existence from far away. And look at that gorgeous water. Eat your heart out, Mario Sunshine. And oh my god, the controls. You steer with motion controls, just like in Mario Kart Wii. But unlike Mario Kart Wii, the controls in this game are so touchy that anything short of a little nudge will send you into a corner. Oh, and jumping in this game is done by moving the Wii Remote up or down. Even the slightest vertical movement will make you hop, and it's hard not to move the remote up while you're turning. Also, as far as I could tell, there was no way to reverse. This usually isn't a big deal in racing games like F-Zero, where the goal is to just keep driving straight the whole time. But M&M Kart Racing has a lot of little nooks and crannies where you can get hung up. So without being able to turn around, you're forced to drive straight and turn sharply until you do a 180. Oh, and while you're driving into a wall, you're treated to this lovely noise. Isn't that great? It's like the howling demons of hell have come to steal your chocolate-covered soul. Approaching sound Okay, I want to make something very clear here. I am not bad at racing games, okay? If there was a racing game on the N64, I had it. Mario Kart, Snowboard Kids, even the weird ones like Iggy's Wrecking Balls. But this game, for the life of me, I could not figure out. I was always crashing into a wall or going behind a barrier that I wasn't supposed to be going behind. It was like the developers actively wanted me to fail. I mean, just look at this win record. Racing. After a few free races, I decided to try tournament mode. This is where all the action is. If I knew I was going to stand a chance, I'd need to pick an Eminem who was a cool enough dude to go all the way. Sorry, Orange, you're out. I mean, just look at the sky. Yeah. It was about now I realized there are two main kinds of tracks in this game. Ones that are mind-numbingly difficult because of how they're built. Yes, I see the pipe. I see it. No, drive around it. Around it. And courses that have almost no obstacles, and basically just see you driving straight for three minutes. Gameplay! The problem is, in either situation, the levels never really feel fun. The really frustrating courses, like the first level of the game, have all these little obstacles for you to get hung up on. Pipes or doorways or oddly designed turns that constantly hang you up and force you to turn around and restart. Luckily, the computer AI is so slow that this usually doesn't matter, even on hard mode. The other courses are just the opposite, and honestly, I think I like these ones even less. Long, open stretches of land with only a few turns, which means you'll be doing a lot of this. So after about eight races in tournament mode, I realized something. This game never ends. Seriously, for a game that feels like it was slapped together in an afternoon, there are a ton of levels in this game. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to play them all because to play a level, you first have to beat it in tournament mode, and that became a problem. You see, on the ship level, there's this ridiculous turn you have to make onto a ramp. It's way harder than it looks. And because the controls are so sensitive, if you miss, you go out behind the ramp on the other side. And since you can't reverse, you've got to turn around while the M&M demons screech at you for your incompetence. 
then you have to turn back around to do it again, and oh look, I missed it again! As if that wasn't bad enough, there's no way to restart a race during a race, so I had to complete all three laps first, even though by this point my rivals had long since finished their runs. But wait, now I'm slipping through containers and behind obstacles because video game, I guess. I finally got so frustrated with the whole thing that I just gave up. Definitely not the worst game I've ever played, but it is by no means the best racing game out there. Um, we're not done yet, though. We still have one other game to play. Strap on some suntan oil. That didn't make any sense. Inflate those volleyballs, boys and girls. We're going to the beach, M&M style. After all that kart racing, I sure could use a relaxing vacation. Good thing Eminem Beach Party is here to drive my blues away. Okay, now I've just got to put my name in here. Yep, that looks right. Eminem Beach Party is a minigame compilation, but it's a bit of an oddity. The minigames are all pretty short, and there's very little in between that makes it feel like a full game. Each of the games feels short and empty, like there's not much to do beyond the bare bones elements. So, I figured this time I would pick the green M&M. You know, mix it up a little. Oh my god! Look at this beautiful 3D world! They even fixed the water! I take it all back, this game is a masterpiece! Once my wonderlust wore off, I figured I'd play a little beach volleyball. Alright, I'll just... Huh! Uh huh. That's, uh... Huh. Okay, so volleyball is actually pretty hard to play. I mean, just look at all these controls. In fact, it took me half the match to realize I had control over both of my teammates. I'm not sure exactly what it was, something about the motion controls or the timing of the game, but I just never really figured out how to do well at this one. I did eventually unlock some After Dark Volleyball. Oh yeah... But it turned out to be exactly the same game as before. Next up was the ring toss. Now this one wasn't really that bad. It's basically just setting up your shot and flinging your wrist. If everything matches up, you ring a buoy and get some points. There's not much more to say, really. Ah, nailed it. Most of the other games are what you'd expect. There's this weird mallet game where you're supposed to fling an angry potato man into these little M&M flowers. It's pretty basic. Not really broken, there's just not much to it. Okay, so I just looked it up and it turns out this angry little potato dude is called Mr. Runch, and he's from the Nintendo DS game, M&M's Break'em. Neat! Kayaking is another game that's incredibly bare-bones, and it happens to be the only game you have to unlock. You literally just waggle your Wiimote the entire time to the beat, and that's the game. Needless to say, it's not really all that fun. Gameplay! If you like skee-ball, then this next game might be for you. Skee-ball is exactly what it sounds like. You take a ball, you roll it down the slope, earn some points. Since I'm a go big or go home kind of guy, I decided to go for the 100 point hole every time. This strategy did not work out well. I just couldn't find the sweet spot where I'd nail a hit, so I ended up not scoring a single point. Ah oh well. The last game in Beach Party was probably my favorite. 
Say hello to Cullinator. This game is a simple shooter minigame that has no business being in a beach-themed minigame collection, but darn if it wasn't the most fun I had playing this game. Those of you who know me personally might know that I love color-related stuff. That's actually the theme of the game I'm working on at the moment, Hue Adventure. But enough shameless plugging, just look at this game. Yeah, it's simple, but you get to color gray M&Ms, isn't that cool? I don't know, I really liked it. It made me feel like a god. Unfortunately, that's all there is to this one. There really isn't much to this game. In fact, both of these M&M's games were pretty shallow experiences. You really get the feeling that these games were made quick and on a budget. That's not to say there's not some fun to be had with these games, but it's few and far between if you're playing by yourself. Yeah, so uh, that's both M&M games. You know, I, uh, I don't really know why they made these. I mean, they're okay, but... They're very shallow games. It feels like they were really rushed. I don't know why they made all these games, but, um, I mean, god. Sure could go for some M&Ms right now. It's like there's something subliminally in my head that's making me want to eat more M&Ms after playing those games. I don't know what it is, but anyway, I will see you guys later. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go get me some of those M&Ms. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. I just wanted to give a little thank you to Mike for sending me both M&M's games. You know, despite my appearance in the video, I actually did have fun playing these, so thanks, dude. Um, I also want to suggest to anybody that's still watching, please check us out on Infendo Radio. We go live every Sunday at 9 Eastern Standard, and we have a produced show on Infendo.com that's even more beautiful. Our YouTube channel also has tons of Let's Play content called Infendo Plays. Please do check that out. And if you absolutely love us and you want to consider donating to our Patreon, that would be really amazing. We have a lot of stuff on there for you guys if you're into what we do. So please check us out at patreon.com slash infendoradio. Again, thanks for watching, everybody. Bye bye